Welcome back. Later today, President Trump will meet with his pick to head the Treasury Department, former Goldman Sachs executive Steven Mnuchin, one day before the Senate is expected to confirm his nomination tomorrow. This, as Mr. Trump, in a meeting with airline CEOs on Thursday of last week, promised to unveil what he calls a phenomenal tax reform package in the next couple of weeks. Watch. Lowering the overall tax burden on American business is big league. That's coming along very well. Uh, we're way ahead of schedule, I believe, and we're going to be announcing something, I would say, over the next um, two or three weeks that will be phenomenal in terms of tax. Republican Congressman Jeb Hensarling chairs the House Financial Services Committee. And, Congressman, it's good to have you on the program. Thanks for the invitation. Can you walk through what the tax reform package uh, may look like as you see it? We were thinking, a lot of people out there, that this would be a top priority for this administration. And it feels like Obamacare and national security has uh, taken the oxygen out of the room of tax reform. What will the package look like and what's your timeline? Well, I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, there are several different priorities that the administration and Congress has, and we can walk and chew gum at the same time. So uh, the way our budget rules work, uh, you frankly need to do Obamacare reform, repeal and replace, before you can do tax reform. What I do know about tax reform is it will have uh, a much lower business tax rate. We have, as you well know, the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world. If there's one thing that is shipping jobs overseas, it is an uncompetitive tax code. So dropping the corporate rate, and frankly not just the corporate rate, but other business entity rates is paramount to us having a healthy economy. Uh, second of all, I think the tax reform plan, uh, and I haven't seen the details, uh, but I believe it will also be gauged towards simplicity for working Americans so that ultimately you can take a small postcard uh, to fill out your taxes on because too often we know that people are gaming the system. I think there will also be uh, uh, generous uh, credits for uh, uh, child care. I think the, tip of the most important deductions of charitable uh, and mortgage interest will be there. But ultimately, it will be built for growth. It will be built for simplicity. And it can't come at a better time because our economy is still lackluster under eight years of Obamanomics. We need to get it going along with regulatory reform. Uh, tax reform is one of the most important things we can do uh, to lift people out of poverty and get middle income people uh, back on the ladder of success. And I, and I want to point out that many people see a repeal and replacement of Obamacare as one of the biggest tax cuts of all, by the way, uh, getting, getting rid of that tax on business. Will, will the tax reform package, do you believe, include a border adjustment tax? Well, I don't know, and I'm not a Vegas bookie, so I know that Chairman Brady, my good friend Kevin Brady, also of, of Texas, has that as part of his plan. I know he's taking a lot of feedback uh, now uh, on that plan. Uh, whether or not the final package has that, I do not know. But I do know that when the dust settles, we will have a far simpler, flatter, uh, more competitive tax code. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll let him and the president figure out some of those details. And, and of course, he, he joined us last week on this program to do just that. Let's talk about regulation rollback, uh, Congressman, because last week on Friday, we got the news that Dan Tarullo is stepping down, uh, who was the bank supervisor. And of course, we know that the president signed an executive order to roll back regulations on business. How will that yes, look different and move the needle on economic growth from your standpoint? Well, right now, unfortunately, we have federal bureaucrats who are essentially in the boardrooms of our major financial institutions, uh, which leads to Washington allocating credit along political lines. Uh, this is not good. This will not lead to a healthy economy. Uh, this politicizes credit allocation. Ultimately, what we need is we need greater capital, uh, which is part of the House Choice Act, uh, which is the replacement for Dodd-Frank. And so what we believe is, is that we need greater levels of loss absorbing capital, private capital, kind of an insurance policy so that we don't have Washington bureaucrats micromanaging uh, our banks, uh, which is, again, leading to the politicization of, of credit. So uh, with Dan Tarullo leaving, as you know, he de facto uh, took over the, the board seat that President Obama never appointed that he should have. But what I think is it's led to an unhealthy economy. And so what we see is 
uh, that entrepreneurship is at a generational low. We see that uh, last year the economy grew at an anemic uh, uh, less than 2 percent. Uh, and we know that healthy is at least three and a half percent. And I think with the right regulatory reforms, the right tax reforms, we could have an economy growing at four, four and a half percent, which would lift everybody up. So, number one, uh, we need to make sure that bureaucrats are there to enforce the law, not make the law, and that all the laws pass a cost-benefit test, which is also known as common sense, and ask the fact, mm -hmm. do these regulations impose greater harm on the economy or do they do more good? The sheer weight, volume, complexity, and cost, particularly of the Dodd-Frank bill, is just crushing our community banks, making it more difficult for small businesses to access capital. And you can't create jobs without entrepreneurship and small businesses being, being vibrant. So I look forward to working with Secretary Mnuchin and, and the President on making sure that we have uh, robust levels of private capital, mm. but otherwise, let freedom ring. Let the yeah. free enterprise system work. I think you make a lot of great points, Congressman, uh, and I know our viewers are, are looking forward to seeing that economic growth uh, move in a substantial way in all of this. We'll be watching, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. We'll see you soon. President Trump vowing to stand behind Japan.